Welcome to Mike Morrison Ministries, Church at the Barn, Saturday Night Life. Would you open your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, please? Acts chapter 1, verse 7. Well, let's back up. Uh, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them this Jesus, should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And uh, I've heard that scripture used my whole life to say that nobody will know when uh, the rapture happens that's not what it says it said it's not for them to know all right why it was the 2000 years before it's time for the rapture they didn't know that they didn't even know about the rapture. they didn't know anything yet and jesus just says it's not for you to know that he didn't say it's not for us to know that as a matter of fact i want to read uh john chapter 14 where jesus was teaching about the holy spirit coming John chapter 14 verse uh, 12 uh, verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father now how could we do greater works than Jesus because if you read John chapter 8, you'll see Jesus say, it's not me doing this stuff. It's the Holy Spirit in me. And when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and he'll be in you. And what he was doing through me, he'll do through you. So the works that I do, you'll do. What did Jesus do? He, he believed in his heart, said with his mouth, and the Holy Spirit made it happen. He took the word that God the Father told him to say. He said it. He didn't have to say in the name of Jesus, he was Jesus. The Father gave him the word. He said, I don't do anything unless the Father tells me. Father gave him the word, he said it, and the Holy Spirit made it happen. One God, three persons in one. That's how it worked, okay? And that's how it works now. Verse 14, verse 26. Uh, in the Amplified Bible, the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. And the reason I read all that is because the, the word in Greek is paraclete. The Holy Spirit's called paraclete. And in order to say that in English, it takes seven words. And that's the seven words that he is. Comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, and bring to your remembrance everything that I have told you. Now, please turn to 16, John 16, verse 13. He's talking about the Holy Spirit again. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father, he will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. 
So it was not for them to know what the Holy Ghost may want us to know 2,000 years later. I do not believe, I just can't believe, that when the church disappears, God's going to have a wholesale massacre of people who may give their life to Jesus that day. Amen. It's not going to happen that way. There is a, a rapture later on in the, in the uh, tribulation period where that will happen, and people will be taken, and uh, if they're in a pilot in an airplane, and there are people on that airplane that will get raptured, they're going to be in a crash. But that's not the first one. That's not the rapture of the church that happens to set off the tribulation period. Now, having said that, I want to talk about something here. I'm looking around to see if there's any young children. There aren't. Um, um, how many... Uh, let me, let, how many of you heard the expression, uh, the, the elephant in the room? I believe there's an elephant in the room in the body of Christ that's been there for since 2004, and nobody seems to want to address it. And I'm going to address it tonight. Um, it, it needs address. It, the elephant in the room, I want to, I want to define that expression. I looked it up today. It's an issue that needs to be addressed but is being ignored or just not acknowledged. To ignore something obvious, intentionally ignore it. Ignoring something that needs to be dealt with because it's uncomfortable or awkward or scary in this case. In 2004, observatory in Arizona, whatever that name of that big one down there is called, spotted uh, asteroid and began tracking it and it's coming right straight at Earth. It has been coming at Earth for a long time before that, but they just spotted it in 2004. It is taller than the Eiffel Tower and it weighs over 20 I wrote it down because I didn't want to get it wrong. It weighs 20. Thousand. No, 20 million tons. This is a big rock. Taller than taller than three football fields. And 20 million tons. It's traveling at 2,800 miles an hour, and it is he headed absolutely straight at planet Earth. And they've been tracking it now since 2004, and it's not burying. It's on its way. It will get here on Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's odd. Friday the 13th, April, 2029. It will be an abrupt arrival if it hits this planet, and it all literal chaos will ensue. The trackers who, uh, not NASA, because NASA's cooking up a story to, to keep everybody from being panic stricken and you know what lost people are going to panic over this Christian people I hope instead of getting frightened by this will get busy I've been hearing from the time I was that high that Jesus is coming Jesus is coming Jesus is coming Jesus is coming let me tell you something this asteroid that becomes a meteor and hits planet earth is in the book of Revelation. It's this, there are uh, seven seals, 
seven trumpets and seven bowls, 21 judgments in the book of Revelation, two of the seals and four of the trumpets have to do with this big rock. Kabang. It's going to be a big bang. It, uh, <clears throat> the shrapnel that follow an asteroid when it becomes a meteor and hits an at planet, hits the atmosphere of a planet, uh, is the book of Revelation describes it as figs, of, like figs of a, coming off a fig tree, falling off a fig tree. That would be the splatter pattern of rocks. Not just this great big rock, but this splatter pattern of rocks like the size of this room coming off of it. And uh, the trackers who originally began to track it uh, have it pinpointed to hit the coast of uh, the California, Mexico, and the coast right there, right in that area. And it'll hit land and water at the same time. It'll set off a horrible tsunami, of course. 2,800 mile an hour, that's, a, that's an abrupt stop something that big and heavy. Just looking around, be sure everybody's following. Now the good news is, if you read the book of Revelation, the church isn't here to see this. Hallelujah! Amen. Which means, we don't know the day or hour, but we can certainly get a little bit closer now. There is, there is, wormwood is what the Bible calls this thing. The world calls it, Nassau named it. Uh, I've got the name written down here. They named it after an, a god, a pope, Apophis. The god Apophis, the god of chaos. And uh, the Bible calls it wormwood. And... I want to be sure that I've got what little facts I know about the actual rock out here. Um, the sh I told you about the shrapnel that'll be around it. It'll superheat the atmosphere coming in there that fast. Uh, one third of the ocean life, according to the Bible, one third of the ocean life will be wiped out. One third of the rivers and, wa and water bodies of Fresh water on the earth will be poisoned by it. The sky goes black because of the, the when it hits, the debris and one thing or another will blacken this, turn, this, turn it to nighttime. Uh, so the point here then, how many of you know how easy it is to put off telling somebody about Jesus. Putting off praying. Putting off uh, till tomorrow. I know people that put off coming to Bible study, coming to church. Why? Because they're too busy. Right now, church, we're on a clock. And we're running out of time. And I don't plan to be here to see this rock hit this planet. Because I, I believe it's, you can count backwards from the middle of the tribulation, three and a half years. I'm not setting a date, but that would put, if, it, if this rock hits at exactly the mid-trib, you can count backwards three and a half years. That's 2026. Uh, Actually, about this time in 2026, November. Now, we don't know that it is exactly mid-trib, but it's very close. And I know that by reading these judgments and getting the order of events just by studying the book of Revelation. And I'm teaching that, by the way. I wanted to say that tonight. Uh, we, we got started 
on a very big subject Sunday. Was that last Sunday? That's probably why I'm still working on this. And I'm not, I'm going to teach this in depth at that Bible study, and this isn't at all in depth tonight. I'm just bringing this up because I want some Christian people uh, to, to wake up. Not necessarily people in this room, you're here. But there's a lot of people should be here tonight and they're not because they're just too busy with the world's business and they're putting God off and putting God off and putting God off. There are people who are going to go through that mess and they're going to see that rock hit this earth and they're going to have to deal with it uh, because they're going to put it off right past the rapture and they're going to miss it. The, the Bible's pretty clear in uh, Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 10, and a lot of other places. If you're not looking for him, you're not going. Now, some people might say anybody born again will be looking for him, but right now that doesn't seem to be the case. There seems to be a lot of people who have better things to do than have anything to do with Jesus. And, you know, if they got a, they just bought a cow, they just married a wife, you, you know how the parable goes. It's the same way in the United States right now. We got a ball game here, we got a um, vacation, you know, it's time to do this, it's time to do that. We've got a, um, you know, we got a family deal over here, we got a work deal over here, we got a school deal, and another school deal, and another school deal, and another school deal. And, uh, it, it, what, what am I saying? I think a big rock needs to quit being the elephant in the room. Somebody needs to talk about it because some Christian people need to wake up and some lost people need to get born again. And lost people, this is going to scare lost people. It shouldn't scare Christians. It should just say, hey, that's coming. Let's, let's, get on, let's be ahead of it. Let's be out in front of this instead of trailing along behind. Hallelujah. Now, you can believe NASA if you want to, and it's going to be a close call. And this thing's going to come, this thing's going to come screaming in here, but the, but the gravity of Earth won't pull it into the Earth. It's going to go, it's going to take out a few satellites, but it's, and it's going to be a real close call. But don't worry, it's not going to hit anything. Only God said it will. I got the book of Revelation and I got a lion bureaucracy called Nassau. Let, 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 me, let, it, let me put it this way. Have you heard anything the government has said in the last 24 months that's got any truth in it whatsoever? Why would we believe that? I believe the guys that first saw it, they said, man, it's going to be a direct hit. Then, of course, it got spun. Then the spin doctors got a hold of it. And you can get out on the Internet and check this out if you want to, and there'll be all kinds of scientists with all kinds of degrees reassuring people, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And there's people that don't want to hear, but there's Christian people won't want to hear about it. It's just scary. We don't want to, we don't want to listen to scary stuff. Well... Listen, you're going to hear about it. It's going to be on the news. It's, this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. About, you know, about a year out, it's going to be a real big deal. Why? Because it's going to look like it's going to be a direct hit. And you have the same people telling you it's going to miss that have been telling you every other lie that you've heard for six years before it got here, or seven or eight. It's not scary. Why? We're not going to be here. This happens in the middle of the tribulation and there's a post-tribulation rapture. So I'm just saying, church, looks to me like I'm not setting a date, but we got a lot of work to do in the next five or six years. A lot of work to do. And uh, that was... An, that was title of my message tonight, Deadline. How many of you work good when you have a deadline? 
let's put it this way. How many of you get more done if there's a deadline out there than if there isn't? Procrastination, I mean, I mean, my wife doesn't need a deadline. She's a rare individual. I need a deadline. <laughs> if I have a deadline, I, I seem to get prepared depending on how important it is to me. <laughs> this rock hitting here is a real important deal, I think, to anybody. I mean, you want to put this off, you're not thinking real straight. It's coming, and there isn't anything. Any... Now, here's another thing they're going to be cooking up, is this rocket they're going to send out there. Mm -hmm. How many tons was this sink? 20 million ton rock traveling 2,800 mile an hour, and they're going to stick it with a rocket and move it, push it. Hmm. They can do that at the movies <laughs> only in the movies. I don't, bl I don't doubt they can't hit it with a rocket. I'm just saying they're not going to move that rock. The rock's going to move the rocket. It's going wherever it's headed. I think God knew about it when he had the Bible written. I think John put an apt description of it in the book of Revelation. And I think that there's a time, there's timing in this. There's timing because God gave us the equipment to spot that thing, measure how fast it's going, deduct how long it's going to take it to get here and say, figure out the time. And isn't that hard to do? Wake up. There's a deadline. Let's get something done. That family member you were going to tell about Jesus, you know, you might tell them about this. Well, I don't want to scare them. Well, I guess to let them get scared when they get in the tree. I'm telling you what, anybody that misses that first rapture is going to get scared. They're going to get scared on the first day of the tribulation, and they're going to get more scared every day of it, and there's nothing they can do about it with prayer. I don't care how born again they are. I don't care if they memorize this Bible. This deal's off. Christians will be hunting a place to hide before that's over with. If they don't, if they take the mark of the beast, they don't go to heaven. If they take the mark of the beast, they're going to get killed. If they don't take it, they're going to get killed. Martyrs. They'll be martyred after martyr after martyr after hundreds of thousands and millions of martyrs before it's over with. I think it would be okay if some of us Christians knew we had a deadline and got a little more serious about evangelism between now and then. It's time to tell people about Jesus. And it's time to pray that the Father draw these lost people away from this lie the devil's selling them and, and opens up their minds so they can see the truth. You're running out of time. And if it scares them, oh well. There's a lot of people been born again over the years because of fear. Now, I'm not saying fear is a good thing. It's not. It, the Bible said in Romans chapter, in fact, let's read that. We're pretty close. Go to Romans. Uh, chapter 2 and verse 4. I'll read the Amplified Bible. Are you so blind as to trifle with and presume upon and despise and underestimate the wealth of his God's kindness and forbearance and long-suffering patience? Are you unmindful of, actually ignorant of the fact that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent, to change your mind and inner and you change your mind in inner man to accept God with, to accept God's will. That's a mouthful in the Amplified Bible. I'll read the King James to you. 
because you're probably familiar with it. Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. There's two ways people come to Jesus. They recognize how good he is, or they get scared about what's coming and what could happen to them. I've heard people laugh about, you know, you're just selling them fire insurance. People don't want to go to hell, so they get born again. Well, that's not a bad reason, you know, to ask Jesus to be Lord of your life so you don't go to hell. That's a fairly good reason. That might be reason number one. <laughs> After you get born again and God gets on the inside of you instead of the outside of you, there's a hunger that, that was being filled with all kinds of trash, is now filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and now that person has a lot better chance of wanting more from God than just fire insurance. But they're going to have to hear something more. How many of you know a Christian who got, you, you think got born again, but it doesn't look like over time it worked? Well, it doesn't mean they didn't get born again. It just means they never heard anything. They never took any seed in the ground that would produce anything that had evidence of a new birth. If you call Jesus the Lord of your life and you're, and you are, you're looking at him as um, your, your Lord and you're looking for him to come back, you can go into rapture. You might get your... Ducks rearranged the whole time you're on earth. <laughs> it might be one bad wreck between now and then that could have went so much better because the goodness of God hits things and they're trying to go south and God gets involved in it and turns it around and it turns out right. And then this starts going wrong and you pray and believe God and it starts going right. Or it starts going wrong and you start doing what you did before because you don't know any better and whining about however bad things happens to you and you go through that and you go through that and you go through that and you go th some things you just never get over and they just stack up over time. Well, that's no way to live. But if you're, doing, if you're living like that but you still believe Jesus is Lord of your life, you can go that way. Wouldn't it be better to find out that God left you probably over 7,000 promises in this Bible. And you can receive every one of them the same way you got born again. If God said it, you could put it in your heart and say it with your mouth and put it in your situation and God will make it happen in your life. Amen. That's a better way to live. Hallelujah. Amen. But my point tonight is, wouldn't it be a good thing to just uh, spend more time with the salvation of family members, friends, work, people you work with, or just strangers you absolutely don't know. Wouldn't it be a good time to share Jesus with somebody every day? You don't have to lead everybody to Jesus, but wouldn't it be good to Tell somebody about it. Would it, would, would it be better if somebody missed the rapture and knew why and knew what happened than miss the rapture and believe the lie the Antichrist is going to have all built for them? You know, we're abducted by aliens and all this stuff they're going to cook up. To, there'll be a lot of people fooled the day the church leaves. Who won't be fooled? It'll be the people the church told about Jesus, whether they might not have took you up on it, but they know better. Why? Because you talk to them. Somebody talk to them. Say, hey, someday, there's a lot of people going to vanish off the earth, and you're going to get lied to, and I'm telling you right now what happened. We went to be with Jesus. And you can too. You can go with us. It'd be a lot easier. If you stay, it's going to be hard. You can still go with Jesus. And this is how you do it, you know, and give them, 
because they get born again after the, after the rapture, the same way you do before the rapture. You believe in your heart and say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. No devil in hell can stop you during the tribulation any more than they could before. It's just that you don't have any promises to stand on now. Because this God, this deal God made with man is off. And there's another deal on. The deal that's on is God's judging mankind. Judging, actually he's judging the devil. And there's human beings caught up in it. He's judging, he's judging things. Right now, we're, in, we're under grace. Hallelujah. And there's, and that's why I believe, now, you know, not everybody's going to believe with me that this, uh, they're not going to believe, like I believe, that this thing's inevitable. They're going to believe that the church can pray this, uh, this thing off, this meteor off track where it won't hit the earth. Hey, I don't doubt that. If I was here, I'd be standing right there pointing at it. It's no different than a tornado. And I've turned them, more than one of them. It's no different than, uh, than uh, any, any miracle that you've ever seen, except there's not going to be anybody here to do that because it happens in the middle of the tribulation and the, the deal's off when the church leaves. It doesn't matter what people believe. There's nobody can turn that rock except God, and he's not going to because he said in here it's going to hit. And he said what's going to happen when it hits. And the, the, the sixth um, trumpet, the, where'd my notes go? I got off ahead of myself. Anyway, the the uh, the sixth seal, seventh seal, first trumpet, second trumpet, third trumpet, fourth trumpet are all about this. That's six of twenty-one judgments that are in the book of Revelation are all about this rock hit, and it's going to hit, and we're not going to be here to see it. Now, I don't know if it's two and a half years, it's two years, it's one year. I don't know when the rock's going to hit in the seven years. It's toward the middle, I know that. Could be smack dab in the middle, I don't know that. So I still can't tell you the day or the hour that the church is going to be raptured, but I'm telling you, I'm going to have my undivided attention looking for Jesus. Here about, I'm going to be safe in about three years <laughs> before the rock gets here. I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be looking for him to show up and be caught up together with him in the air. So between now and uh, and then, you could do your own math. Just subtract whenever you think it'll be from when that rock gets here. Now you. I know when the rock's getting here, okay? These scientists are pretty good at a few things. Predicting when this meteor hits the earth. They've even got it down to the time of day. And I don't, I don't have that information. But it is the 13th, Friday, April, 2029. Mark the calendars for people that are left here after the tribulation so they'll know what day to hide from that rock. And that's exactly what the Bible said they'll be doing. They'll be hiding from this thing in the aftermath of it. Did I make a mistake again? Oh. <laughs> I do. seem to do that a lot. All right, then. <clears throat> Point number one. Let's be sure I've got through these points. Uh, revealed timing uh, is what the Holy Spirit does for the church. 
when it's time, he tells us what time it is. I believe this, uh, I believe in 2004, God had them put that observatory in Arizona. He showed them how to make an observatory. Man didn't think that up. He showed them how to do it. He showed them where to aim it, and he tapped them on the shoulder, and he said, look at that rock. <laughs> Track that thing. It's coming. So we know, thank God we know. In uh, uh, this generation, the Bible said, when the fig tree blossoms, that generation will see. That generation will not pass before the tribulation happens. That was 1948. Since I was born in 1951, unless something goofy happens, I will be alive because I'm in that generation. I'll be alive to see the fig, the tribulation. Well, I'll be alive to see the rapture that kicks the tribulation off. Hallelujah. I've known that since I was little. Never been a doubt in my mind. Truly. I, sometimes I wonder why when I hear people putting it off, you know, putting it off and putting it off, and if God tarries and if God tarries. Let me tell you something. God isn't going to tarry. He knows the time. He knows the season. There will be no tarry. There will be people who are ready, and there will be people who aren't. There will be Christian people who have witnessed and are, and are you know, have, have, have led people to the Lord, and there will be people that won't. They'll put it off. They'll put it off. They, they just won't get anything done about it. How many of you had heard about this rock coming? Um, I don't know why it's been such a secret other than um, it's probably not something seeker-friendly churches want to do because it might run off some people who would not want to come back because they got scared. But I'm telling you, It's going to get, the people that are going to be scared by this are going to get scared because this is going to make the news. The closer this gets, the more you're going to hear about it. And when it gets close enough, you're going to hear about it every day. It's going to be the major focus of the news. Um, point three. How many of you ever heard that Jesus is coming sooner than you think? And uh, um, every time somebody's went to heaven and they've seen Jesus and he sent them back, he said, tell them I'm coming sooner than they think. S sooner than they think. See, you can know in your spirit something, but it's, it's just your mind. Sometimes it just won't wrap around it. Evidently. Because Jesus coming quick seems to be Put off, put off, put off. It's looking real close right now. Uh, point four. Um, yeah, I, I got that point across too. There's no amount of prayer can stop this rock if they're in the tribulation when they start praying. Why? The church age rules are off. Man no longer has the authority. God gave man authority in the earth for a lease. 6,000 years. And the time will be up when the tribulation starts. And man doesn't have the authority to do that anymore, so it doesn't really matter uh, whether you're born again or not. The covenant that you have with God will no longer be able to turn uh, what's going on in the tribulation. It won't stop anything. 
Point five. Could this be another reason why the United States of America can, ha can hardly be found in the book of Revelation? You can look at Daniel, Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah, um, uh, Revelation, of course, and any other, jo uh, Zechariah, uh, Hosea, Joel, all of places where the end time is mentioned. And it is hard to find the United States of America. It really is. I've, I, I've always thought it was because most of the Christians are gone and there isn't enough, when the Christians leave here, the, work, the working people leave. And the, the uh, production of this, the gross national product of this company, is going down the tubes because it won't have anybody to do the work. They'll have the idle rich and the do-nothing poor. Uh, but the, the, the men and women that have been man in the workforce are a very high percentage of the workforce is born-again believers. So I've always thought the, the economic catastrophe in the United States would be enough to be a non-mention for us. But what if this rock hit pretty close here? That means that the, the, the effect of it wiped out so many people. So what was left here of people that weren't Christians are wiped out by that rock. I mean, a great, a third of them. That's really going to decimate the economy and really make them a non-factor in being able to go to the other side of the world and get involved in a fight. They got nothing to fight with. They got no money. There's no money. There's no anything. No wonder they're not a mansion. Uh, but my main point tonight is, does this help anybody pick up the intensity or the importance of your prayer life and your evangelism? For so many years, we've said, that, well, that I'm called to pray. Uh, I'm not, I don't. I'm not comfortable witnessing. Or, uh, you know, I like, I like to witness, but I'm not really into praying very much. This is the same ministry. You pray, and then you put action to the faith without works is in faith. You pray for the lost, you go talk to the lost, and then you pray for them after you leave. And you pray, and you go talk to the lost, and you pray for the lost, and you, and you pray for them after they leave. And you, you know what? You just keep... You just keep checking up. It's something that we do because it's important and we're running out of time. The importance is, uh, I don't know. If, I've wanted to see revival in this land and I've known forever that the way we've been doing things isn't working. I mean, if we keep doing what we're doing the way we've been doing it, we're going to keep getting what we're getting and to think we're not the definition of insanity. We are going to have to do something different in order to get a different result. And I don't believe that the... the uh, Billy Graham type ministry is what God has in mind for this revival because it's the last one. This is the big one before the rapture of the church. And I believe that there's too many people aren't watching TV. There's too many people, when they look at the device, they're on the device constantly. They're not looking at God on it. They're so caught up in pornography and uh, and. Uh, sports and uh, hobbies and games and gambling and you name you name the vice it's on that thing and it's got people trapped so we got to tap them on the shoulder and say hey <laughs> there's a rock coming and it's not going to miss. They're telling you it's going to miss. It's not going to miss. It's going to be smack dab, bam, into the earth. It's going to be ugly. 
You might want to check your whole card. I mean, that's one way. That'd be the oil patch way of sharing the gospel. I'm sure there's a better way, you know, for people that are talking to other kind of people. Everybody has their own style. There's a rock coming. Fast. 2,800 miles an hour, and it ain't slowing down, and it's on dead center earth. And it's going to get here in 2029. Father, thank you. <laughs> for a wake-up call. Thank you for letting us know the time. Thank you for letting us know just how short it is. Thank you for drawing all men to Jesus. Thank you for lifting the veil when we talk to people so that they can see just how good you are. It's your goodness that leads them to repent and give their life over to you. Hallelujah. And if it takes a wake-up call like this rock, then I say thank you for waking people up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wake up our friends and our family members and the people that we work with. And Father, w wake up people that we can come in contact with when we're gassing up vehicles, shopping in stores, eating in restaurants. I thank you that when w did you point out to us somebody that needs to hear about Jesus. Thank you that when we bring up your name, the Holy Spirit tells us what to say. Thank you for showing us how to keep it simple. And thank you for directing it right to the heart of what they're interested in. Because you're interested in whatever they're interested in. And we're just here to speak for you. Thank you for using us. In Jesus' name, amen.